Hello everyone and welcome to Adam Shar Weekly. In the last lecture, I covered that how you can add a Redux flow into your SwiftUI applications. We are going to do a revision of what we did last time and we are going to implement the same exact increment counter, but during this revision, we are going to make things a little bit more better. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. The first thing we are going to do is to create our stores. I already have the store folder. I'm just going to go over there and create a file and we will call it store. And we will be using this same file to hold everything together. But if you want, you can go ahead and create multiple files if you want to. Okay. So the first thing we're going to do is create some sort of a state. So I'm just going to create a state structure. And in that state, I will have the initial state of the counter to be initialized as zero. This means our counter, that state, global state, is zero. The next thing we want to do is we want to create a reducer. Now, last time I created a reducer as a separate class, but when you're using reducer as a in JavaScript, in React framework or Redux, it's just a plain function. I mean, reducer is simply a function that can take in a state so we're going to pass in a state and it will take an action that what do you want to perform, which slice do you want to update, and it will return the updated state. Now at this particular moment, we don't really have anything called action. So let's go ahead and create an action. Before creating an action, I'm just going to create a protocol for action. So every action that I will create has to conform to the action protocol. Now I can go ahead and create another structure and I will say increment increment action which will conform to the action protocol. Now you can see that we don't really have any body for increment action because we're not really passing any data. We're simply saying when you call increment action, well that's pretty much it. We will just increment the counter. Now let's go back to the reducer. In the reducer we will get the state We'll hold it in a different property. All right. And now we can go ahead and return the state now without changing. So that's kind of like a useless kind of a reducer because it just takes in the state, whatever the state is, and it doesn't really modify the state and it simply returns the same exact state again. So this means that we have to use some sort of a switch statement to update the state. So based on the action that we are performing, where you have passed, we can check. If the action is of type increment counter, then we can go ahead and update the state. State.counter plus equals to one. And for the default case, we will simply go ahead and do nothing. We will simply go ahead and break. And this is it. This is our reducer, a simple function that takes in a state and an action and it returns you the updated state. Now we can go ahead and into our store, we can create a store. So store. The store will be using the observable object. So I'm just going to use observable object. And the reason is that, again, we do need to modify, uh, tell the notify the views when the state is changing. So we'll have a state property and it will be simple state and we will mark it with published, which means that anytime the state changes, uh, somebody is going to get notified, whoever is interested. The other thing that we need is to get the actual reducer. So I'm gonna go ahead and say var reducer which will be of type reducer. Now there is obviously no type as a reducer because reducer is a function, but that doesn't really stop us of creating a type alias. I can simply go up and create a type alias, type alias, and I can call this type alias a reducer. And I can give it the same exact uh, definition or signature as the reducer function. So something that can take in a state, an action, and 
it can return a state, which is the same exact signature if you look over here. Okay, so now let's go back to our state or store. And in order to create the store, we will go ahead and pass in a reducer, which is a function, by the way. Let's go ahead and pass in reducer. And we will pass in a state. If the state is not available, then we can go ahead and initialize the state. So state, something like this. All right. Now you can go ahead and make assign these values or you can make this uh, a different state or assign it to a different value like right over here like an initial state if you want to that's perfectly fine also self dot reducer equals to reducer and self dot counter not counter sorry state equals to state let's go ahead and build this now over here you will get a problem because we are not using the scaping. So let me go ahead and add scaping over here because we are holding a reference to it. And the final thing we need to do is to create a dispatch action so that the store can dispatch different actions which can eventually call reducer which can update the global state. Self.state equals to reducer and passing in the state and passing in the action. Great. All right. Now over here, I think we have used publish var state, which means that the state can be changed without the reducer. So maybe we should use a different way. Maybe we could call it like a private. So you can't really set the state or the state can only be set privately. This means that if the content view is trying to, or some other view is trying to update the state using the store property, then it should not be allowed. And the only way to update the store or the state is by using a dispatch. Okay. All right, so that's pretty much it. Let's go to the scene delegate. And what we want to do is we want to create an instance of the store, which will be store. And we have to pass in the reducer, which is simply reducer, the function. There we go. So now we have the store. We can actually pass it down to our content view. So I'm going to go over here and I will add environment object and I will pass in the store. This means that this store is now available to the root view and all the other views which are child of root view. Let's go to the content view. Now we can actually go ahead and get the value. We will use environment object var store. So this property, since it's marked with environment object property wrapper, it will automatically be populated. We should be able to access the store value store dot environment, no store dot uh, state dot counter and if you do want to access it in the export preview you still have to embed it right over here there we go and let's go and check out the canvas and let's go ahead and uh, resume it it should say zero because I believe our current state of the counter value is zero you can always increment the value of the counter over here to be like 100 so that it displays 100. But right now we are just leaving it to zero. If we see zero, then it means that, okay, we have initialized it correctly. So I'm running the application and now you can see that it says zero value. Obviously, if you click on increment, it's nothing going to happen. Uh, so let's go ahead and fix that issue. In order to update or increment the counter, we have to go ahead and dispatch an action. So I'm just going to dispatch an action. And I believe the action type is increment action that we want to perform. And there you have it. Let's go ahead and run it again. Not sure what happened over here. Uh, okay, so we need the self over here. Okay, that's fine. 
Let's go ahead and run it again. And hopefully now we will be able to dispatch an action on a button click and increment the counter. There we go. So we implemented the same exact application, but this time we use a little bit of a different approach, a little bit more cleaner code in the end. And this kind of creating action using protocols and by action creating structures, this is really going to help us in the future when we are performing asynchronous operation. All right. So this is revisiting Redux flow in a Surf UI application. Hey, if you like this video and want to support my channel, then go to Udemy and check out my different courses. I just released a brand new course which goes into MVVM design pattern in Surf UI. This just got released and it is an amazing course which will take you to a journey of how you can implement MVVM design pattern by Surf UI framework. And also it goes into client server. You will implement a node server and using JavaScript, it's a lot of fun. If you are looking for a course to just get started and also learn advancements in Surf UI, then I have a separate course for you, which is Surf UI Declarative Interfaces for any Apple device. This is a 21 hour course and it covers every possible thing you can imagine about Surf UI. This is also the best selling course. So if you are interested in these courses, check out the YouTube description and click on the link. Thank you so much and I really hope that you enjoyed the video.